Andrew Pimpitello, the Fight Guys here, also yes. BehindTheGloves.com. Um, as you can see, we are in Wildcard West here in lovely Santa Monica. We just got done with the uh, Triple G Media Workout. Uh, returning crew, as always. Uh, Frederick Hawthorne. Um, oh, all the shop conversations here. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, Steven Correño, uh, KY The Sports on YouTube. Dang, you almost made me forget mine. <laughs> and as you can see to the left, we have somebody new. We are uh, replacing Dominic. And we are now bringing Dominic. <laughs> <laughs> it is now the fight guys with the lady. Yeah. <laughs> but your I'm name? I'm Cindy Conti for Ring TV Live, taking Dominic's place for today. She took Dominic's place for today as our boy Dominic is in New York for the uh, Keith Thurman versus Danny Garcia fight that is uh, happening this weekend on CBS. Uh, let's talk about. Big timing us all right now. Oh, yeah. He, <laughs> big timing in New York. But who cares? <laughs> Dominic. No one cares about him. Anyway. <laughs> But uh, let's talk about what we saw today and honestly what we heard, man. Them punches that Triple G. Canelo is amazing. Oh, oh, my God. Canelo. I keep oh, saying Canelo all day. Canelo. <laughs> that was the main everyone kept asking, but no. Triple yeah. G's, wow. That was just like stones, like bam, bam, bam. I'm like, oh, Jacob is going to be on the other end of that. And he has such a weak chin. Uh oh. Oh. Yeah, weak chin? Oh. I'm sorry. Hot take. I, it's true. <laughs> Wow, why do you say he has a weak chin? Just because well, he was that done down that to, one time? Well, as compared to Triple G, he has a stronger chin, but you heard it, you saw it. You didn't even have to see it, you heard how his jabs were just... I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of that. I'm yeah, he, he is the type of guy I wouldn't want to meet in a dark alley alone, I'll be honest with you. But uh, Fred, your thoughts on just no, the thunder that he was dropping off? Reggie Miller said Triple G is the dark alley. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Reggie, yeah, Reggie Miller said, said that about... Um, uh, uh, the dude in New York, um, so was getting kicked out of the game. Charles oh, Oakley. Charles Oakley. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, some people you don't want to see in the alley. Uh -huh. He's like, Charles Oakley is the alley. Oh, Triple okay. G is the alley. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, everything, everything Cynthia says is true. Uh, the power is there, but you know, there, there are some things that, that have to work in between the ears and below the waist that has to, to beat a Daniel Jacobs. Uh, if I'm a betting man, I would, I would bet. Triple G because I wouldn't go against streaks. It's like if I'm in Vegas and I see the roulette wheel has ten red mark, ten red numbers, I'm gonna bet on the eleventh red number. You know what I mean? And same thing with Klitschko. I don't bet against streaks. You know, no matter who he's facing because I think there's something special in that. Floyd Mayweather, I've won about twenty, thirty thousand dollars betting on Floyd Mayweather. Just betting. I bet Floyd blind, and and the same holds true with someone like Triple G. You know, you bet them until you lose, you know, and uh, I have Triple G winning that fight. Will I be rooting for Triple G? I'm still undecided. Will I be rooting for Daniel Jacobs? I have no idea. But uh, I think uh, what Cynthia says is true and what we heard as media members who we heard is really electrifying. You know, the power is there. But can, but, but the big question, yeah, the big question is, he's going to have to use the entire ring to beat a Daniel Jacobs. He won't be able to smother you and use his uh, systematic footwork mm -hmm. to put you in a phone booth, what Triple G typically does to a David Lemieux, to a, uh, the guy he just fought overseas. So you're going to have to use your legs to beat a Daniel Jacob. And, uh, can he catch him? Big question. Pure on the bottom, but of course, obviously, that was... But his grandmother died. Yeah. But his grandmother yeah, died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, no. But the, no, but even King, then, I was trying to well, say that. Triple G's father died, remember, and he was able to get back to the ring at boom, and he didn't train for a month, mm -hmm. and he still won, so... No you have an opponent. It is, it is, yeah, it is different, but, you know, head and heart. He fought with his heart. I get it. Yeah, with the Pira comment, I was going to say, that was a decade ago, though, and as Danny Jacobs has said, you grow, you mature, you become a better person going forward after something like that. Um, but, man, I'm, I don't know. I've seen Triple G, what, media work out four or five times, and that power just still it's, continues it's to scare still, it's, 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 it's always surprising. We always know we're going to hear it. We always know when he does hand pads or something, we're going to be like, and sure enough, everyone around us, everyone around you guys, I'm sure, was just like, wow. Like, it's, it's just, it's, it's, you hit the base of it. It's, it's weird, because we've been to plenty of, I've even been to heavyweight. Like, yeah. you know what yeah, I mean? Like, heavyweight, heavyweight workouts, and it's, it's on that level, like, at least. I mean, it's it's just completely devastating. As far as Jacobs, um, one thing Abel told me today was that uh, David Benavides, obviously we all know, was training and yeah. sparring with, uh, with Triple G. And he told me that he uses David first in the first four rounds. And I asked him why was that? And he said because David's very fast. He has like a fast pace. And he's like, we want that. I want Triple G to feel that. I want him, as soon as he gets to the ring the first time, it's boom, we're fighting now. And I think that kind of speaks, obviously, to Jacob's kind of blitzing um, Quillen. 
you know, as soon as he got on him, he just let him off the hook and he, he got him out of there. So I think that's definitely a good strategy. I mean, I, I don't know if Danny's really going to take that approach. I just think he caught Quillen and he's like, well, let me finish it now. But I mean, I think if it, if it were to happen, if it were to happen to Triple G, if you were to get caught and Danny comes at him, I think that's a good preparation. Is like you fight with someone fast, you fight with someone who's going to make you fight right away. Let me ask you this, uh, Fred. We heard Triple G after the Kelp Brook fight. He wasn't comfortable in that type of a street fight type of brawl that Kel Brook brought to him. Do you think Danny Jacobs actually needs to flow like that and fight like that? Or does it need to be like a slow methodical pace for them to actually get to that? I think the slower the fight is, the, the, the better advantage is for Triple G. Yes. I think that, uh, I'm glad you agree. I do. <laughs> I do. Because, uh, he do Triple G doesn't like street uh -huh. he's, no. he's very concise and like meticulous. And he just, there's a certain way he likes to fight, and he doesn't like that kind of fight. I think that uh, Daniel, Daniel Jacobs has to get inside of Triple G's jab, land whatever you can land, the straight lefts, the overhand right, the hooks to the body, and get the hell out of there. Like, there's just no way. And when you get done with your work, similar to what, what Floyd Mayweather, how, how Floyd Mayweather wins a lot of his fights. If he does his work, and if he doesn't feel he can get out the way because the ropes are in the way, the corners are in the way, you wrap up and you clinch and you get the hell out the way. You know what I mean? And, uh, but here's the genius in boxing. See, in order to beat a Triple G, people say you move left, you move right. You gotta, you gotta fight the guy north and south. Jab to the soul plate, jab to the head. You faint, you know, you use your, use your shoulders to keep him off balance and make him step to the left, step to the right. You know, little subtle things like that. So in addition to Daniel Jacobs going left, going right, he has to change the levels of his body positioning. You know what I mean? I think with his height, because Jacobs is what, six foot? And he's a little like two or three inches taller. Yeah, he yeah. has a three inch reach over uh, a Triple G. Triple G. Will that work in his favor, do you think? Yeah, for sure. W w without a doubt. But! I mean, wouldn't it be almost like, think of Pacquiao, like he's short and he's quick. I think Triple G he's shorter and quick, but... Where's Triple G quick? quick? Where's Triple G quick? I'm sorry? Where's Triple G quick? What does he weigh? Where's where he quick at? Where's he quick? Oh no, just like uh, his footwork. He's just really good at his footwork, but so is Jacob. That's one thing I did ask. I asked both of them, Triple G and Abel, that not only does Triple G have the footwork, so does Jacob. So how, how are you guys gonna do that? I think, I think to speak on what you guys were talking about is, and especially what you're talking about with Floyd, is that just like Floyd, Floyd will lose a couple rounds in the beginning to figure someone out. Uh, but you always get the sense, and then after four rounds, five rounds, it's you're doing what Floyd wants to do. And I think we've never seen Triple G not do what he wants to do. Like Triple G is always in command of, of what's going on in the ring. So until, so it's up to Danny, I think, like you said, change the levels, uh, obviously box the perfect fight, but you have, to, you have to do it in a way that you're not doing what Triple G wants to do. Because sure. if, if Triple G is in charge, then you're in trouble. And you gotta get him out of that element because he's comfortable in what, what what he's doing works. Then he's just gonna keep doing it until he breaks you down until the fight's over. So you have to do you have to make him uncomfortable. You have to make him not fight what he wants. He wants to fight. Make him reach up for you. Make him make him chase you and reach up for you. Make him make him be worried about the body when when you're when he's coming at you. I mean, you have to make him uncomfortable, and we just haven't seen that. No one's been able to make right. Triple G uncomfortable and, and make them fight the way they want to fight. Everyone fights the way Triple G wants to fight. Now, what I saw today was during the workout, Triple G was smiling. <laughs> that's kind of scary yeah. for somebody to be punching like that and still at the same time. That's like a psychotic smile coming from a guy about to murder somebody. I, I was telling media people around me, I was like, I was telling Jandra, I was like, he's like a murderer. Like, I feel like I'm in the Serial presence killer. of a murderer. Yeah, like, like, and he just, he doesn't know how scary he is. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I'm, I'm like, like yeah, I'm just like, <laughs> pretty much. He's like, whole heart is scary. Like, it just, he's, but he doesn't know it. He's real, like, uh, you know, but you see why people don't want to fight him because. Yeah. My, the thing I took away the most from this entire thing is Abel's been training him for how long? How many years now? And even then, he's all like, you know what? Nah, no more. I can't take this no more. And he's holding yeah. the bat. He's like, no. I gotta just, nah, let's just end this here. <laughs> I was like, wow. And you've been holding that thing for him for like five, six, multiple years. So it's like, a, a little, little part of me thinks that's show a little bit. I don't know. Maybe it isn't. I've never actually seen well, training yeah, camp in the middle yeah. of training camp, but I think a little that's, I mean, I'm sure it's true. But I think it's a little like, well, the cameras are here. Let well, he's only doing one round. Right, yeah. I mean, you're not going into a fight 
in the eighth round throwing punches like that. Yeah, you know, no. you're not going into the first round throwing punches <laughs> like that. So, so I mean, a lot of that is show, and there, there was 50, 60 media members here from various outlets, and uh, your job is to sell the fight. It's on pay-per-view. Your job is to sell the fight, and uh, the, their, their plan was preconceived. So, so they knew what they were doing before they walked through that door in terms of what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, and then we're going to cut them short at the apex of your power punches, and that'll be, we'll take your shirt off, we'll show your abs, we'll take some pictures, and then we'll I do... I turned around quickly for that. <laughs> I told, I, her, like, I told her, I told her she was posing to take a picture know, in the corner, and, and I'm like, like he's oh. taking a shirt off, she went, wait, what? <laughs> so, uh... She turned around. Nice. <laughs> it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be a good fight. fight. How much is it? How much is this pay-per-view? Uh, I think it's so $54.95. Yeah, $54.95. Yeah. Oh, that's cheap. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Or Very maybe affordable. Last time they did it was, what, $29.95, so it might be just five yeah. bucks more this time, but even then, $65 bucks all the for HC and everything. Chocolatito, Quadras on there as well. Is this the fourth fight? Uh, I have uh, no idea what the fourth fight is. Blue Chip, I think, is Who? the fourth fight. Was it Blue Chip Martin is gonna be the fourth fight? Oh, um, damn, what is his first name? I know uh, Steve, Kim, Steve Kim rants around the wall. Yeah, Blue Chip Martin. He likes him? Yeah, he likes him. He likes Blue Chip Martin. He likes somebody? Yes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot to say one word. Watch this channel. That's where that comes from. That's why you're surprised. He likes one of them? <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Since when? Steve Kim is the devil. <laughs> He likes the demographic group? Yeah. What? <laughs> what? I know. I know. What round these will go? Because what round? Triple G's never gone past the ten, and I, I that was one thing I really wanted to ask Triple G. Just Look, I'll be honest with you. I think this is going to be one of those fights where they respect each other early. They're yeah. going to try to fill each other out. So the first two to three rounds is going to be a feeling out process. I think once around the fifth and the sixth come around, they're gonna start letting go, trying to see who could take what. Mm, my best bet, it honestly stops before the 10th. I think nine. That's why, I, I'm saying nine, tenth at the most, but it yeah. stops there. Fred, I know you, you, you hold highly on this. Ah, uh, man, I, I believe it'll be multiple knockdowns. I, 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 I yeah. you know what, I just believe that the comfort level in this fight for Triple G won't be won't be as high as people think. You know, I think when Daniel Jacobs goes to the corner at the third round, fourth round, and he's still pretty much unblemished. You know, because I I don't think Triple G will be able to catch him early in the fight just because of the style, just because of you know slick black fighter for the novice fans out there. And uh, I think that. It's, it's going to be a real uncomfortable fight for Triple G. If I'm a betting man, I'm betting Triple G. You know what I mean? And I know people out there are going to say, well, Daniel Jacobs got 14 knockouts in a row, 13, now, whatever it is. But he's never lost. You understand what I'm saying? And uh, there's a lot to be said about a man who's never lost. That's why I'm not changing the subject, but that's why Garcia Thurman is so compelling. These men, yeah. these two men have never lost. You know? And, well, in the minds of a lot of people, Garcia has lost a couple of fights. You know, officially, <laughs> officially he hasn't lost. You're yeah. right there. But in the minds of a lot of people, he lost the Herrera fight. I think he won it. Mm -hmm. He lost the Peterson fight. I think he won it. Mm -hmm. And those, those are pretty much it. Mm -hmm. But it's like, you, I, I get the opinion. I get the thought. You know, I'll listen to somebody who argues it and everything like that. But officially, you're right. They have not lost. But with Garcia, there are questionable things there. As far as Jacobs and uh, and Triple G, um, you know, and, and I, I, I mean, I, I could see it, yeah, I think by nine, ten rounds. Um, I agree with what Fred said that maybe Triple G will have some issues in the beginning, but I think once the power starts landing, even on the arms, on the elbows, on the shoulders, I think Danny might start, you know, avoiding it more and more. And then it becomes a little more of kind of what I was saying, a little more of Triple G's fight as far as him stalking, as far as him going forward. I mean, Triple G's, you know, had the power, obviously, the whole time, so he knows when a fighter starts avoiding him because of it. He knows what fighters do to, like, okay, I don't like getting hit, so I'm going to start doing this, as opposed to when they're not in, when they're first in the, in the ring and they're taking punches, they're a little more aggressive, they're a little more, let me stand there. And I think once, and he knows once, okay, let me start landing punches, and once that happens, fighters stop doing that a little bit more. And so I, I could see that happening and, yeah, it ending nine, ten rounds, I think. Do you guys agree that Danny Jacobs is the second best middleweight in the world at the moment? 
The only reason why I ask that is because obviously if Triple G wins and he wins like he normally does, everything like that, you're going to get the fans discrediting this win already. You're going to get the haters already saying that he wasn't this, he wasn't that. So what do you guys think personally where does Jacob stand in the middle of the division? No, you know, it's weird because Fire. I spoke with Triple G about this um, when I interviewed him and he does believe this is his most dangerous opponent. And I go, do you believe he is the number two middleweight? He said, yes, because he is powerful, he is strong, he is a great fighter. And he's like, it's just going to come down to who's going to be better that night. And so, I mean, do I know, uh, do I, based on his fighting styles? I think, he's, yeah, I think he's, I think he's number two, but yet, I mean, we're going to have to just see the ring that night because you have one and two in the ring vying for the title. I mean, it's a unification. Like, all those belts are up. Yep. For all, all of them. So, this will, it will be very, very interesting to see what he does. I mean, it would be, it would be a shocker to me if it was an upset, though. It would be a huge shocker. Who would upset the apple cart? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do I think, who else can yes. you name? I mean... Are we saying that Canelo can middle weight? Canelo could do him whatever the hell he wants. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm just being... Can Canelo, whatever he Canelo wants. is Canelo weight. Yeah, Canelo is... <laughs> Yeah. Canelo, Canelo, wait, 154 and a half, 155, 154, 164 and a half. He can do whatever he wants. He's the A side for any fight that he wants to be in. He's basically demands anything for no, I'll say for your question, right? right. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I oh, no, 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 it's fine. You're no, not no, interrupting. No, I, I can always come back. Yeah, um, I just, if we're saying Canelo's a middleweight, then. Open this hip. He's never no, fought at the middleweight He's limit. never fought at the middleweight limit. Even though he's fought for the middleweight title, but even then that was at 155, so you got to think about it. Okay, so if Canelo's not a middleweight, then, then yeah, then Jacobs is, is the best middleweight in the world, for sure. I mean, Charlo jumps from 54 to 60 and is the top five middleweight. I mean, this is true. Oh, yeah. I mean, because Billy Joe Saunders, you got to respect, regardless of how you feel about whether how he wins fights, does he wins fight, he holds a belt. So he's the mandatory for everything that goes on at 160, or, he, or people are the mandatory to him. Your perception, uh, but Daniel Jacobs is right there. Two, three, regardless. I mean, what do you like in a fighter? That determines it, you know. And uh, so, yeah, absolutely. Charlo will be a hell of a fight. Uh, Charlo needs to feel that 160 power first before he steps into a ring with uh, a Daniel Jacobs or a Triple G uh, to get acclimated. But he's there. He's definitely there. And it's going to be a good fight. I, I, I'm excited for the I'm, I don't really care about the undercard per se. I'm just interested to see. You have to be. Those are fun. <laughs> Chaka Pico's fighting an, a guy I don't know. And Quadros is fighting a guy I, I don't know personally or have ever covered. I just want these two guys to fight. It should have been an immediate rematch. Yeah, yeah. It should have been immediate. But the great thing about it is that they're on the same card. Yeah. yeah. So they're able to promote the fight yeah. and jump right into it at the end of the summer. Hopefully here back in Los Angeles. Yeah. yeah. But, but uh, yeah. He, he, yeah. Should I answer your question? Yes. He's he's there. Two, three, whatever you like. Should are you guys gonna order the paper? Obviously, we're not going to New York. We're not gonna go to New York for this fight. Uh, but are you guys gonna order the paper? That's worth the money. Of course. Yeah, yeah, I think it's worth the money. I mean, you get to see. Uh, Chocolatito and Quadros aren't on the aren't fighting each other, but I mean, you get to see both guys fight. I mean, they're and, fighting and, decent opponents. Yeah, I was gonna say um, yes, yes. the guy Quadros is fighting just went 12 rounds with Anuwe, so it's kind of like, well, can Quadros knock him out? You know, that that's kind of the question or whatever. Can he look better than Anuwe? I mean, I didn't see the fight, but just to know that he knocked some guy out that Anuwe couldn't is is a big statement, I yeah. think. Um, Chocolatito is fighting the guy that Quadros won the championship from. So, you know, they're, obviously they're small guys. We don't know their names. I'm not going to pretend like I've seen them fight before. But, you know what I mean? I just happen to know that because I researched it. But, but you know what I mean? Chocolatito Quadros fight. You know, yeah. But, but I mean, the, the fact that, yeah, I saw both those two guys and they both have history with, with you know, at least all like, in that mix is, is, is intriguing. So, um, and then obviously the main event. I mean, it's, and just HBO's production is, is yeah. I mean, sometimes it's, that's it's, it's, you know what I mean? It's, it's the best. So it's top of the line. Yeah, definitely. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll be ordering it for sure. Uh, if I'm by myself, I'm streaming it. I have a fire stick. Uh, <laughs> He's honest. If, uh, if I have, if I'm inviting people over, I mean, I'm just being 100. I mean, I have it's a like beautiful. Like five dollars at the door. I know. I have a beautiful home, and people are coming by. Yes, you do. If people are coming by that want to hang out and watch fight, I'll order. 50 bucks to entertain friends is cheap. Yeah, you know what I mean? You guys bring the six pack, you guys bring the chips, I'll order the fight. Yeah. I'll gladly do that. And uh, so if, 
if that happens. But if I'm by myself with my son, no, nah, I'm. I'm gonna check the links on that fire stick. Oh, that don't work. That don't work. I'm being 100. Like I'm putting that 50 dollars in my bank account, and uh, I'm not going. I'm not working. No, I'm not check the tweets. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, texting us what's up, what happened. I was gonna order the fight, but now you're reminding me about the fire stick. I do have. It. I do have the fire stick as well, but I do like my stream to be nice. So I, I don't know. I'm probably gonna have to check it out first. HD now. The streams are in HD. Wow. So I gotta, I gotta, I gotta see what's going on, but. No, yeah. order the pay per view. Yeah, Trust order. me, it's, it's gonna be really good, really entertaining. It's worth and, fifty dollars. And then plus, also, and then plus, also with the streams, you might not get HBO. You might get whoever uh, the UK has, either Box Nation or Sky Sports, and their commentary team. You really don't You're want right. necessarily right. here. You don't You're want right. to necessarily right. here when it comes to You're fights right. like this. Wait, we, we told the fans to order Goto Kirtley, so. If we told him to order but that. But that was a knockout so special, though. But no, 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 no. <laughs> that was a knockout special. No, but you don't think someone's going to be knocked out? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Kirkland's going to get yeah. messed up, man. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. But that knockout would have been like, that been like one to the body, one to the head. <laughs> Done. Yeah. Kirkland's yeah. yeah. head would have flew in the yeah. third row or something. It would have been like a, like a knockout from the 80s Nintendo <laughs> type of knockout. Like, <laughs> yeah. like bodies would have gone in sections. That's how yeah. he would have fallen. But yeah, no. This fight is pay-per-view worthy, honestly. It's pay per The undercard as well as pay-per-view Well, I don't know if it's pay-per-view worthy. All right, all right. Because when I was growing up, HBO was the shit. Like, HBO had. Yeah, but see, when you were growing up, Corey Jones never was on pay per view. I mean, he was, but I'm saying. Yeah, but come on. It's not pay per view. This is not a pay per view. Take into what they sold us last year on pay per view compared to. Take into what they sold us last year. Like, I understand why Crawford Coastal was pay per view, but should have been pay per view? See what I'm saying? No, HBO got enough. HBO, man, come on, man. HBO got to do a better job. And I don't mind standing alone on this, but it's just no way in hell you put Triple G Jacob on pay per view. Not, not when you got the most intriguing 160 pound guy with no name, the most intriguing 160 pound guy who has a medium sized name. How can you sell that? You know, well, how would you can put it on like, would you be like a PVC and put it on like Channel what? 2 and or just Showtime and just. I mean, yeah, that's what I would some run of like, the best fights. I would run it are, like it. Are that right now? Yeah, I, it's no way I would. I, it's no way if I'm if I'm running HBO, if I'm um, Peter Nelson, if he's still there, I, no way in hell would I put this fight on paper. It's just it don't make sense for boxing fans, you know. And, and, and I'm a boxing fan before I'm a I'm a reporter. I'm a consumer. I'm a responsible. I'm very very responsible when in turn when in turn when it comes to money. And it's just no way in hell would I. See this fight in 2005 as a pay-per-view fight, you know, and that's, I kind of agree there. that's, that's what I feel. Oh, you already you said for sure you're ordering the fight. Oh, yeah. right. I'm gonna order it regardless. <laughs> and I'm gonna forward it, rewind it, and just watch it. You know, I'm gonna dissect that fight. Mm -hmm. So now, obviously, we have uh, somebody next to. Um, Cynthia. Cynthia, so introduce yourself. I was gonna say Christine, my apologies. <laughs> the C's, the C's get me. <laughs> Sam Gudkowski, I manage the Wild Sports Boxing Gym over here in Santa Monica. It's a great media day, actually. Great turnout. That's actually what we were just talking about. We were talking about uh, how Triple G's punching power was throughout the media workout while Abel was holding the round bag, and also just how this fight is big and how people should order. Your thoughts on the fight and your thoughts on just Triple G and the media workout. The media was great. You could hear that thunder and his punches maybe next door. Our neighbors probably got uh, got some ear uh, earbuds in there. Earbuds still going, but. Uh, no, I think I think it's a it's one of the first scheduled of three fights that I'm really excited about this year. Finally, you know, Gennady with Jacobs by that should have been made, finally got made. Manny against Mir, I don't know if that's made or not, but that's another great fight. And, Can and Canelo Chavez. So I think those are three great fights. You know, it's obviously on pay per view, and uh, if you're a fan and you enjoy boxing, definitely a fight you order. You know, it's two guys that are great punchers and uh, you can never count Danny out. You know, he, people are saying Gennady, well, Danny, Danny proved it against Peter Quillen, Danny has proved it against many other guys, and uh, I'm excited to, to have that fight uh, finally get made. Now, talk to us about all the media workouts that have been here. We've had Triple G, we've had Canelo, we've had uh, Luis Cesar Chavez Jr., we've had Peter Quillen here, Hugo Centeno. So many fighters have come through this place. Obviously, Wildcard holds a huge name, but this is Wildcard West, as you said. This is the one in Santa Monica. This one, you guys are opening up classes and everything, so just let people know about that. Of course. Well, it's been great. Since we started, we've had most of the big stars either come through here or train here. So, you know, like you were saying, Canelo did his three, uh, four camps here, uh, even including the Mayweather fight we did about two weeks before we going to Big Bear. 
You know, we've had everyone, unfortunately, you can't see behind this wall, but behind the wall, we put up every logo of a guy that's been out here. And that's Canelo, Chavez Jr., Peter Quillen, Triple G, who does media days here, Chocolatito, who's old, he's in town, he uses our gym. So it's been from workouts to media days to just training. We've had everyone come through here, and it's been incredible. Now we're, you know, we're launching it an extension of our classes um, and we're gonna have about 25 classes a week to choose from including two days a week we're gonna have sparring out here for regular me and you that if they want to work out and, and actually spar uh, get some rounds in uh, going at your own pace including so we're actually launching two yoga classes oh there you go so now you get to see all the logos thanks to Alan out here and uh, all the guys that come through here so it, it's the extension of the classes is a way for us to Get people excited and learn boxing. We're not big on cardio boxing, although that's popular. We're big on teaching boxing and, and actually having people learn what these guys learn. So everyone, I will tell you this, everyone gets excited when they actually throw the punch correctly and hear that power in their hand like, holy shit, I just... I just did what, maybe what Gennady does, maybe not what Gennady does, but, you know. They, they start throw, somewhere, right? Yeah, you, know? you start somewhere, so. <laughs> you never know. It's incredible, and uh, we're launching that March 20th, we're going to have a brand new schedule, uh, we're going to have brand new rates, so I suggest anyone that's interested to check out our website, wildcardwest.com, check our Instagram, email us at info and uh, we'll be happy to get some more information over to you guys. Also, let them know uh, where they can follow your fighters. I know you got a couple fighters fighting uh, on the 17th in New York and one next week as well. Yeah. So let them know where they can follow your fighters. Yeah. Uh, March 10th, I got a kid fighting um, over in Tustin on, on Rangel Bass Private Show. And March 17th is really the big fight uh, for us. It's uh, Alex Salcedo fighting Johnny Garcia at Madison Square Garden Theater. Uh, so we're the main event at Unimas. It's uh, it's a big, big fight for Alex. It's a big weekend in general for boxing. Mm -hmm. uh, from the whole, I think Wednesday is the press conference. Thursday is the the boxing writers' war, uh, media dinner, right? Yeah. Things yeah. of Thursday is the boxing. Friday is the Unimas show. That's where Alex Salcedo will be fighting. You can follow him at Salcedo 12 uh, on Instagram. Um, and uh, Saturday is the accumulation of the whole weekend with Gennady fighting Nate Jacobs and Chocolatito and Quad. And Ryan Martin. There we go. There you go. There we go. Ryan Martin. There we go. Hey, did you, did you say you're fighting the main event? We're the main event. He's fighting Ryan. Ryan. Your guy is fighting. No, 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 no. No, Ryan Martin. Make, make, the, uh, no, make Colin as the, the, the main event special attraction. Uh, but I think on Unimas, we're, we're scheduled as the main event. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. Since it's the Irish. Uh, the weekend, St. Patrick's, St. Patrick's, St. Patrick's, Day. Day. St. Patrick's Day weekend. Oh, March 17th. Mick Conlon's yeah. a huge attraction out there. Um, and then we're fighting, uh, this is pro debut, so he's fighting like a six rounder, I think, a four rounder. And we're fighting an eight rounder um, on uh, the main main card. Oh. Johnny Garcia is our opponent, a familiar Johnny. Dangerous kid, he fought Jose Ramirez in his last fight. He ended up dropping Jose Ramirez up in Fresno. Yes. Uh, oh. Remember that fight? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Johnny's the, dropped. The Jose Ramirez from like Central Valley? Yeah. 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 Oh shit. Oh wow. Yeah. So Johnny's a dangerous opponent coming in. Um, it's a big fight for Alex. You know, it's, it's something we're gonna we're gonna show what we've been working on the past eight weeks. He's been up there with Abel, uh, secluded away from his girl, uh, for girlfriend away from his kid, um, and uh, it's been a hard eight weeks. I'll tell you that. How much does it cost to train here? Train out here? Yeah, how much will uh, the classes cost and everything? Yeah. yeah, so March 20th, we're going to introduce new rates. And there will be two rates. We're going to do $200 a month for eight classes, which is only 25 bucks a class. Or $250 for 12 classes a month, which is about 20 bucks a class. So, between uh, you know those two things, and $30 for a single class. Do you play that a flat fee to use a gym? Uh, for what? If you wanted to come in. And you know, like how Wildcard oh, over there, yeah, they have pay, a $5, yeah, $5 flat fee. Yeah. We have a $30 a day, and that includes a class for the day. So. So, how much of the class is going to be again for uh, Wildcard West that you're going to have on uh, March 20th? Yeah, so March 20th, when we relaunch, we're going to have two different rates. Uh, we're going to have $200 a month, eight classes, which is 25 bucks a class, and they're very affordable, or 250 for 12 classes, which comes out to about $20, bucks a, uh, $20 a class. Or if you want to do a single class, it's $30 a class. Same thing for a day rate, you want to come in, you get the class included with it. It's going to be an hour long class. Uh, we're going to start just like a regular boxing workout, from jumping rope to doing some mid work to the bag work to the ab workout that finishes up. Can kids take this class also? We have a separate kids program. We have a kids program three times a week, Tuesday, Thursdays at uh, 4 o'clock. 
four to five, right after school, so it's convenient, especially if you're in the in the neighborhood area. Um, and Sundays at 9 a.m. Uh, that's our we you know Sundays actually the younger crowd, with six, seven, eight, nine, ten year olds, and Tuesday Thursday has been the older crowd from like eight, nine, tenth grade. All right, well, thank you for your time. Thank you for all that information. As you said, Wildcard West, check it out. Go to the website. You'll be able to catch everything. And finally, do you guys have any closing words for uh, the whole Triple G Golovkin uh, uh, media workout? Uh, no, it was just... Uh Abel always gives us a lot of time. Tom always gives us a lot of time. I appreciate that. I really got some time with Triple G, so it was, as a media member, I was happy. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, how, however the fight's gonna go, it's gonna be exciting. It's gonna be tense. It's gonna be one of those fights. The first round, you're tense from the beginning, and everything's gonna play out how it is. So it'll be good. Yeah, you, you helped me remember something. Uh, you know. K2 Promotion actually does a good job, you know what I mean, like in terms of like, I know me and Abel Sanchez disagree a lot on so much, we even crack jokes about it now because we never agree on anything, but uh, <laughs> should do a show together. It, it, no, except that we're human, <laughs> we are human, Y'all should do a and, show together. Uh, but K Tom Walford does a hell of a job, you know what I mean, in terms of his presentation of his fighters, you know, he's not in charge of whether they're trained well, but just the visual effects and how he runs the media, does a hell of a job, A1, and uh, I'm glad he's able to put an upper tier card, he got Quadras, Chocotito, and Danny Jacobs, Danny Danny Jacobs the main event, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> so, I mean, kudos to them, I, I'm expecting a good fight, I really don't know who I'm going with, but if I bet today blind, I'm betting. Triple G. I, I want to tell you, I want to add one more thing. I agree 100% with you, man. Tom Lawford is an amazing jock. Yes. And when was the last time or ever since the HBO debut that Golovkin had a fight that was people weren't, didn't, you know, weren't satisfied after? Yeah. Yeah. There hasn't been one fight that people weren't satisfied. Whether it's a quick knockout or, you know, or him beating the opponent up or him even getting hit a little bit, people are always excited. And Tom has done a tremendous job putting the shows at the Forum, in Madison Square Garden, you know, Stop him up. and Eddie, yeah, Stop yeah. Hub. Him and Eddie Hearn out of England, I think two of the best guys right now that are putting on events. These are real events where people are, you know, fans that get excited about so. fans are excited for. Final words from you? No, this is going to be a great fight. I think it's going to be even more interesting that it's in Jacob's backyard. He's from Brooklyn, so it's going to be Brooklyn? a lot of his, a lot of his fans are coming out for this fight. And for Triple G to go back to Madison Square Garden and to defeat or to defend his title, it will just be very electrifying, very fun to watch. You better come out to Jay Z, Daniel Jacobs. You better come out to Jay Z or Biggie Smalls. Only two options, all right? As for me, order the fight, enjoy it, have friends over. Like he said, 50 bucks to entertain your friends. It's cool, just have them bring the beer or whatever you like to drink, bring food. Enjoy it. Uh, Fernando for BehindTheGloves.com and the fight, guys. And Frederick Hawthorne with. Um, What's that? Barbershop Barber conversation. <laughs> Steven with KOR to Sports on YouTube. And Cindy Conti for Ring TV Live. And Sam Gorgowski, welcome to us. We're saying, see you guys at the fight. Have a Bye. great day. Thank you. Cool, yeah, I gotta go.